Uh, Ryan from House Trip. Uh, thank you very much for a very um, uh, lively and uh, opinionated presentation today. Uh, can you maybe just lay out your thesis in, in uh, what you just presented? Um, well, I presented how to work with bloggers and what kind of topics you should be looking for. But really it boils down to a few things. Uh, do your research, uh, read the blogs, form relationships with the blogs, uh, and it's more about qua quality over quantity. Uh, the quality of the blogger, the quality of the relationship you're going to have, the quality of the engagement they provide. Um, what do you think are some of the common traps that DMOs fall into when it comes to uh, working with bloggers? Like, what should they be looking out for? I think that they're um, kind of dazzled by numbers. So they might see a blog that has a lot of traffic or that they say has a lot of traffic. But instead of looking at whether that blog is uh, related to what you are trying to promote, uh, they just say, yes, yes, they, they fall for the, the numbers and they, they rubber stamp it and that person gets a big trip and then they go back and they, they don't get any actual engagement with the end consumer that you're trying to attract. Um, but isn't is in a way like reach is, and a st great stories, authentic stories, credible stories about a destination, isn't that sort of what DMOs are typically after? Or It shouldn't be on social media. Um, I'll take an example of something like Facebook. You could have a Facebook page which is liked by 100,000 people, but if you look at the talking people talking about section and there's only three people talking about it, then you're not reaching anyone. It's an empty reach. What you need to be looking at is the engagement and whether it appeals to the consumer that you're trying to reach. Right, but if it's like, just to elaborate, if somebody has, I don't know, 100,000 uh, page views mm -hmm. a month, mm -hmm. those are readers, aren't they? That's different from how many people engage with a Facebook page. Oh, well, if you're talking about you know 100,000 readers per month, Sure, um, but you can't qualify whether those readers are ever going to be planning a trip to your destination. It might be that they stumbled on it in Google and spent two seconds on the page after they Googled, I don't know, African holiday and they wanted Kenya and South Africa came up. Um, y you can't really guarantee that that is really the consumer you're trying to go after. Um, I, it's just reaches easy to tell a minister of tourism. It's easy to get the funding from a minister, oh, minister of tourism when you have 100,000 people being reading that, but you're not actually seeing whether they're engaging it or commenting on the post or saying that was really good or handy or using that and jumping off somewhere else to do a booking. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I got this, that's a bit of the conundrum of a DMO, right? Because even, even if you have 100,000 people on your fan page that mm -hmm. constantly engage, you still don't know if they're actually um, going to be visiting. So if you are a DMO and you are um, looking at working with bloggers, like what, what are sort of your you know, top three or top five tips for you know, doing your homework to make sure that you have the right people coming? Well, first of all, you have to know what, what your consumer is reading. And I always say do the ask your mother, ask your wife, ask your best friend test and if you ask those people what they're reading and what they engage with on, on, on online and they don't work in the travel industry remember you are not trying to target people in the travel industry you're trying to target everyday consumers and you ask them what blogs do you read find out see what they're reading then you have to read them and read them for a while not just one post not just for a week read them for a month or two try and meet the blogger at an event try and meet if you can obviously many bloggers are posted everywhere around the world so you can't always do that and then call the other destinations that that blogger has worked with find out what their experience was like and see if if their experience was positive and whether they'll be able to bring a positive experience to you Somebody on Twitter suggested that we should create as collectively as DMOs a blogger blacklist that we can all sort of, you know, contribute to, to to see who's good and bad. PRs have had that in journalism for years. This is not new. And in fact, it's even harder to really determine who the blogger, good bloggers are because there is no editor you can get a letter of reference from to with the commissioning letter. Your editor is the blogger. So you can't double check other than phoning up the other blo uh, companies that the blogger has worked with. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, the you were the last speaker of day one of uh, of this event, um, and I think uh, you know the debate carries into the night, uh, <laughs> which is great. Um, so what do you think of uh, of Somiti, uh, the conference? It's great, uh, and being in Rovaniemi is fantastic. Everybody is so engaged and so excited to be hosting the conference. It's it's really valuable to be around so many DMOs who are trying to develop or have developed a strong social media strategy and are trying to share best practice. 
Um, you, you, you touched on Rovaniemi. What do you what do you think of the destination? Um, well, I haven't seen much of it yet. I've only seen the hotel and the town hall, but I plan on doing my explorations later this week. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Thank you.